the first evidence, the first hints we got that our universe is not what it seems, that there might be something called dark matter floating around out there, didn't come in the past decade, didn't come in the 70s, came way back in the 30s. When an astronomer by the name of Fritz Zwicky, who is by far my favorite astronomer purely because of his name, Fritz Zwicky was studying a cluster of galaxies, clusters of galaxies, the largest gravitationally bound structures in the universe, big things, big things, tens of millions of light years across, way millions of billions of the mass of the sun, just big stuff. And he was studying one cluster in particular called the Coma Cluster. It's called the Coma Cluster because it sits in the constellation Coma Baron. Coma Berenices, whatever, is just to happen to be in that position in the sky, so it's called the Coma Cluster. It's about 320 million light years away, home to around a thousand galaxies, you know, plus or minus a couple hundred, who cares? And what Fritz Zwicky was doing uh, when he was studying this cluster of galaxies, when you see it, when you see the, the galaxies, they're obviously grouped together, like brr, there is a group of galaxies right there, a cluster, if you will. And he was studying their motions. He was seeing how these galaxies are moving around inside the cluster. Obviously, we can't do this in real time because, you know, that takes a while. But you can look at their redshift and blue shift and you can look at their positions and you can figure out how they're moving. And the galaxies in a cluster are buzzing around like bees in a beehive. And he was able to measure the speed, the average speed of these galaxies, and they are going really, really fast. Like really fast, like too fast. Like these galaxies in the coma cluster were moving around so quickly that they shouldn't be near each other anymore. That they should have dispersed a long time ago. Because if you look at their speeds, they should just be like, just gone. Just gone. So Fritz Wiki had a little conundrum. Either the coma cluster, as we call it, is just an effervescent temporary phenomenon. Like we just happen to catch it at just the right time when these galaxies just happen to be like near each other somehow. And they're near each other for like a million years and then they'll go away. But that seemed weird. We don't like coincidences when it comes to astronomy. Or there was something keeping the galaxies glued together. That despite how fast they were going, there was something in the cluster that was holding on to the galaxies gluing them together, binding them together despite their rapid speeds. He didn't know what to make of it. This was just a hypothesis. He called it uh, Dunkel Matari. Apologies for the pronunciation. It's German, and it means dark matter. He wrote uh, like a paper or two about it, like, hey, guys, I don't know what's going on in this cluster, uh, but I've got other fish to fry. He moved on to other subjects. No one really picked it up, really picked it up. It wasn't until the 70s when Vera Rubin started doing rotation curves inside galaxies that we figured something was up. And then we went back to look at the clusters and like, oh, yeah, it might be the same thing. It might be this dark matter. Nowadays, and you can what he did with the coma cluster, if you thought it was a, just a coincidence, we've done it on cluster after cluster. We have known of thousands of clusters by now. It's always the same answer. They're always 90% dark matter. They're always 90% dark matter. If you look at a cluster of galaxies and you see the galaxies themselves and the hot gas that sits between the galaxies, it always ends up being around 10% of the mass of a cluster. There has to be something there gluing the clusters together despite their preference to be blown apart. And we can't see it. Otherwise, you know, we would see it. And so it's some form of matter that's dark. It's dark matter. Hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time. But please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and go to patreon.com slash pmsutter so that you can help keep these shows going. Thank you so much.